Hi, it's your recovery mom. Let's talk about this. Um, here's the thing. This was under a video where I was talking kind of about my eating disorder, not letting me go out to eat, whatever. You can click on it and look at that video if you want to. Um, and it was calling me boring because it wouldn't let me go out to eat, which was so the case all of the time. But here's the thing, I'm fully recovered. And sometimes people comment on my videos and they like tell me, great job, keep going, you can do it, blah, blah, blah. And I love that, wonderful. But I am fully recovered and some people just don't quite realize that when they comment. So I'm guessing that's what this comment is. But I kind of want to talk about it anyway because it's pretty funny. It says, do you have certain safe foods when you do go out to eat? I tend to find any kind of salad okay with no dressing. Let's talk about this. Uh, I absolutely did have that safe food, absolutely. Uh, one time in an Olive Garden, I uh, ordered a salad with just vinegar and Subway, my order, everyone would order footlongs and my order was literally a salad with mustard. So yes, absolutely. Uh, this is kind of, was my safe food. Uh, basically beyond that, I didn't have any other safe foods at the end of my eating when I got really sick. It was just kind of like that was it and baby bell peppers and cucumbers. So here's the thing. I, I, I see that this is your safe food. And now that you know that, you need to challenge it. It can no longer be your safe food. No more salads without dressing, right? Add something to it. If you aren't ready for full I wasn't ready for full calorie dressing in the beginning. I added that skinny girl poppy seed dressing. Oh my God, I lived on that stuff. I had that stuff all the time. And then I moved from that to a low calorie like vinaigrette or yogurt based dressing. I still, I still, God, I still remember the calories in that. I remember, that's hysterical. Then I went to that, right? And then I went to a higher calorie, low calorie dressing. And then I moved into regular dressing. It was like a five step dressing extravaganza for me to get from no dressing to full fat dressing. But I did, and you have to also, because your goal is to recover. You need to recover. The way to recover is when you notice something like this, you challenge it. So now that you've noticed it, <laughs> it's time to challenge it. So what is the step you're going to make? Next time you go out, what can you add to your safe food to make it a little bit of a challenge? You don't have to challenge huge right? When I went out, I didn't challenge huge. When I went out, that was the last place I challenged huge because honestly, going out to eat is a challenge in and of itself, right? I get that. I get that. But also, time to start challenging this. Time to start challenging this. So, buy some skinny girl poppy seed dressing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, go for it. Take those baby steps. After that, get one of those low calorie yogurt dressings. After that, get a half the calorie dressing. After that, try a full fat dressing. It might take six months. But it's time to start challenging this. You've got to get over this. How do we know if we are binging, right? Or if it's extreme hunger? Let's talk about that a little bit. How do we know? Well, I suppose the first thing is to define binging right? Binging, my phone is like literally dying. Let me see if I can fix it. Binging is just the act of eating kind of a larger quantity than a normal person or you might normally eat, right? If you didn't have an eating disorder. It's the act of eating like a large quantity in a short amount of time, maybe feeling out of control. Binging. In recovery, we all binge. In fact, all mammals binge sometimes. All humans binge binge sometimes. It's a normal thing that human beings do. It's just like if my husband binges, he doesn't comment on it or notice it. He just feels extra full. He really enjoyed whatever it was and then like he moves on. He doesn't beat himself up about it, right? So it's a normal thing that we all do. We get afraid because when we go through extreme hunger and mental hunger, we do it a lot. My extreme hunger, mental hunger binges lasted six months plus. That's a lot of extreme hunger pinching. It felt out of control. It was scary. I was always full and bloated in my stomach, right? But that's normal when you're recovering, right? So we need to normalize the fact that this is happening to you. So let's, let's clarify. When you have extreme hunger and you eat all that food, technically that's binging. Technically, by definition, that's what you're doing. That's what we're doing during extreme hunger. Now, is it binge eating disorder? 
No, you are not getting binge eating disorder. Some people, like 3% or less of humans that have anorexia can go into binge eating disorder, right? And that is so, so, so incredibly rare. And if it's not genetically already in your family somewhere, that is not a worry I would have for you, okay? It's not a worry I would have for you. Some humans think they used to have binge eating disorder. Now they have anorexia. They're worried about going back. Also extremely rare because most of those humans, when they really take a good look at what they thought was binge eating disorder, was just their eating disorder in a larger body, right? And that happens. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're going back there. So the extreme hunger binging has to happen. You have to go through this time to get out the other side. So you're not getting binge eating disorder. You're not getting binge eating disorder, but you do have to eat all the food and let the binges happen. Hi, it's a Friday right now. It was a rough week, but next week is spring break. So hallelujah. Um, is it normal that my extreme hunger is so extreme that I eat so much I look six months pregnant and I'm in extreme pain? Yes. I'm out of breath. I just went upstairs. All I did was walk upstairs and down. <laughs> anyway, yes, absolutely, this is normal. If you're worried, I'm not a doctor, okay? I'm not a doctor. If you're worried, you can go see a doctor, okay? But for me, when I was in extreme hunger and still learning how to eat properly, my stomach hurt so, so much. Like I've talked about this before. I would be in the fetal position, like crying in pain. My stomach would hurt so bad. But you know what my brain would be thinking? Of food. I can remember being in so much pain. And finally, I would just laugh. Like I said, fuck it. Way down on my Instagram, I have like some pictures of me like with a, with my bloated belly. Um, which, which freaked me out because I thought it was like, I thought my bloated belly was really huge then. And it was very bloated and huge. But it was also when I still had an eating disorder. And so I wasn't at my set point. And so I even have a bigger belly now in my not bloated state than I did. Anyway, that's a weird story. But I would lay there and be in so, so much pain. And, and um, I ha have those pictures somewhere on my Instagram. But I would tell my husband, I think I might need to go to the hospital because I would be in that much pain. And I can remember one time even thinking, I, I wonder what the hospital serves for food. I wonder if they'll feed me if I go. And I was in so much pain from eating. Like I was in so much pain from all the food that I had eaten. And all I could think about was eating more. Even hospital food, which we all know isn't that good. So yes, it's normal. If you are super worried about it, you can always call a doctor, but it happened to me. Some people take like gas X. Some people take um, like digestive enzymes. Um, that was a scary one for me because I was a diet pill addict. And so I didn't like to take anything in pill form when I was recovering. Some people use form compresses. I used to go get digestive massages. That really helped me. If you have the means to do that, that is something you could try, you know, but what helps most is just time. You have to eat your way through it, right? Learn to process food again. Hi, it's recovery mom. I see that you have been wanting and trying to recover and that it's been eight years and that you've recovered, recovered several times and you are exhausted and you're feeling like it's never going to happen for you. And I'm here to tell you that I was sick for decades. I, I didn't think it was possible for me, especially at my age, but it is possible for you. You can recover. My guess is that when you say you've recovered several times, I think you are probably recovering several times, but I would guess that you actually were never fully recovered. Okay, 
So my guess is you didn't hit your set point and maintain there long enough because most of us think our set point is lower than it actually is. My guess is you still had some sort of minor restrictions here and there. Maybe you were calling them healthy eating, right? Maybe you were calling them intolerances, but whatever you were calling them, they were keeping that eating disorder alive because you were not allowing unrestricted eating and unrestricted body weight, which are the two things that you have to have to fully recover, okay? You can't be maintaining a body below your set point in any way, shape, or form, right? You can't be moving too much, right? Like in the case of maybe orthorexia, or you can't be healthy eating, right? Because healthy eating is just a code word for dieting, especially when you have an eating disorder history. So my guess is you weren't fully recovered those times when you were calling yourself fully recovered. And so what we have to do now is we just have to make sure that you get to that finish line. You can't stop part way. Some of us stop when we become functional. I'm functional. I can eat out. I can eat all the places I want to eat. I can eat all my fear foods. I must be recovered. Okay, that's not recovered. Can you eat all your fear foods in the quantity that your brain really wants them? Did you let your body really get to the set point that it most desires and wants to be at? Because if you haven't done those things, then you're not fully recovered. So let's push and really see what's on the side of that full weight gain, right? What's on the side of that complete eating to mental and extreme hunger six times a day, starting with breakfast, chocolate cake in the middle of the day on top of those six meals. Let's see what that really feels like long term and see if we can get to the end of full recovery this time. Hi. I pick at my food. If I see a piece that looks pickable, I pick it. It used to be for less calories, but now it's a habit. How do I stop? We stop all habits kind of the same way, right? We don't do it. We feel horrible. And then we don't do it again. And it sucks and it's hard. So there's a few techniques that people use, right? Some people distract themselves. Some people just kind of like go all into cracking those habits, right? You can choose the way that works best for you. For me personally, if this were my habit, I would probably kind of start small. Like when I plate my food, I would plate a piece that I knew was higher calorie and that I had to eat first. That would be my rule. I have to eat that first. Then I'm going to try to eat the rest without picking. But if I do, okay, I've met my goal. And then every day, increase the portion of your plate that you're not going to pick at. Okay. And if you have to start at a very small piece of high calorie food or something on your plate, that's where you start. You don't have to start huge. Okay. But that's what always worked for me. If I were to be like opposite actions, I would just do the opposite. I'm just going to plate a burger and eat a burger. I'm not going to pick. That doesn't work for me and it never has. So if that is something you can do, amazing. Do it. Go all in. But for me, that never kind of worked well. I'm going through my clothes. I don't know where to put this one. But for me, that never kind of worked too well, right? So I just went slow. So I would look at your plate. When you make your plate, know what you're going to eat without picking, right? Maybe this piece of chicken. Maybe this piece of steak. Maybe this pile of pasta you're going to eat first without picking at it, right? Then after you do that, whatever happens, happens. You'll try your best, but right? So just make a rule. Look at your plate and make a food rule. Eating disorders love rules. That's why this is so ingrained. It's become an eating disorder rule. So your job is to break this rule. Replace it with a rule of your own, right? You have to eat something else before you can pick at your food and then expand that time. Set a timer. If that doesn't work, set a timer. I'm going to go five minutes without picking. Oh my God. And then if I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick and then expand that time. Just think about what is a little step that I can make in the right direction, okay? And then you just expand on that step and try to make it bigger and bigger. You know, sometimes I just forget I even own some things, honestly. I don't know if that's the case for you, but literally my life. Anyway, I hope that helps. 
can you eat too much in recovery? I think I'm going to make some people mad with this. Here's the thing. I say that. I think I said, I'm going to make a montage of me saying, here's the fucking thing. Well, I say, here's the thing. I think I say, here's the thing in every goddamn video I make. Anyway, is there, is there anything as eating too much in recovery? I feel so ashamed for eating so much sugar and I've only started allowing that today. And then they go on to say, their parents are thinking they're eating too much, right? Binging on sugar. And that's what happens. A lot of people that were around start getting afraid that we're turning into someone with binge eating disorder when we go through extreme hunger. Now, let me be clear. Binge eating disorder is a real thing. And there are some humans that do go from anorexia or restrictive eating disorder to binge eating disorder. Those are usually hum humans that have A, had binge eating disorder in the past, right? true binge eating disorder and not an, a, an eating disorder in disguise or humans that have that in their genetic history if like their parents or their family members have that if that is not you i sincerely believe that it is safe for you to eat all in style right if that is something that you feel like you want to do if you don't you don't have to right but also sugars carbs processed foods are wonderful for you to recover from a restrictive eating disorder with. Okay, so when you have a restrictive eating disorder, you have a lot of repair work that has to go on in your body. You really do. And to repair your body, carrots just aren't going to do it. Vegetables and fruit are not going to repair your body like processed foods will. You cannot eat enough of them. You're going to get so bloated and you'll be so in pain, you won't be able to eat enough of those types of foods to repair. You have to eat an enormous amount of those. You simply cannot get that in. That's why these types of foods are wonderful. They're, that's why they're what you crave. Those foods are going to normalize your brain chemistry more. You have brain chemistry trying to keep you away from those foods. Eating those foods will teach that brain chemistry to start normalizing normal again. So it's very important actually that you incorporate those foods because if you don't, you're restricting and that's part of your restrictive eating disorder winning. Okay. And if you if you have family members that don't agree with this, I would try to seek out some information and teach them about extreme hunger and teach them, print them my, hor my hormone pamphlet, my neurotransmitter pamphlet, and show them what's happening in your brain and why it's important to re-regulate these hormones and neurotransmitters by eating those foods. And you have to eat it in large quantities for that to happen. Hi, Sir Heavenly Mom. This is going to be an interesting question for me to answer as I eat bacon and mayo Sammy. Um, but I love it. Probably my favorite question I've had in a very long time. And I'm going to tell you why. Because this question is probably in many, many people's brains, right? Because I'm saying it took me three years to recover. And then I also, in the TikTok that this was under, said that you have to always be challenging something, right? You do. You cannot stagnate in that. So this human is like, hey, how are you always challenging something? What the fuck did that look like? If it took you that long to recover, you had to have long periods of time where you weren't challenging. Here's what it looked like for me. And that's all I can tell you. In the beginning, I remember challenging a tablespoon of cottage cheese. I put it on my safe food, on my spinach, a tablespoon of cottage cheese. Did I, did I change that the next day? No, I still did one tablespoon the next day. Three or four days later, I made it two tablespoons, okay? Two or three days after that, I did a quarter cup. That's how I challenged cottage cheese. Then I was like, what can I add to the cottage cheese? I know I love sunflower seeds, but I'm scared of them. I'll put like three sunflower seeds. I think I started with six, six sunflower seeds on my cottage cheese. And then I went from there. Very slow, very methodical, but I didn't stop. The second I could handle a tablespoon of cottage cheese, I put two, okay? Also, while I'm challenging these foods in small quantities, I was also challenging other things. So while I'm still eating a tablespoon of cottage cheese for a couple days, I was also trying to figure out how to stop purging because that was a nightmare for me. It was horrible for me to stop. I was trying to 
figure out what I was going to do instead of purging. I was going to try to figure out how I could do it less. I was going to try to throw out my laxatives. I was going to try to see if I could quit the gym. I'm not strong enough for that that day. Maybe I'll try to not, you know, weigh myself on the scale. There was always something I was trying to get rid of if it was a behavior or add if it was a food. Always. There was never a time in that three years that I wasn't actively challenging something. And a tablespoon of cottage cheese might seem small, but it wasn't at that time. At that time, it was huge. While I was getting used to the cottage cheese, I was also trying to cut out those other things like laxatives. That's why it took me so long. If you go all in, it will be quicker. But I'm not kidding when I say once it was out, it was out. If the scale was gone, I didn't go back. When I gave up the gym, I didn't go back. When I gave up purging, I mean, I had times where I say I wouldn't purge and I would purge. But once it was gone for good, it was gone for good. Once I added cottage cheese, it was in for good. So yes, I had lapses like everybody else, but I was always moving toward the next thing right? Never stopping, continually adding. So that's what I mean. And if that doesn't make sense, call me out. Ask me. I love this question. Hi, it's Recovery Mom. And I get this question a lot. I get this question a lot, especially as it pertains to extreme hunger. Um, Some of you will talk about that too. But it says, I had anorexia for two months maybe, and now I'm trying to recover, but I don't feel like I'm sick enough. What? I'm so bad at reading these things. What to do? I'm an idiot. What to do? (laughs) So first, let me say, if you've had anorexia for two months, that means the genetic component of anorexia is turned on up here. And go over to my website and print my pamphlet about the hormones and neurotransmitter changes that have now taken place in your brain. Because I don't care if you've had it for a day or two. Once anorexia is turned on up here, you have a lot of changes have happened, okay? You have changes up there that now have to be turned back in the right direction, okay? So you have, for example, hormones responsible for seeking out high-calorie foods like uh, fats. And that has been damned down so that you stay away from fats and are now afraid of fats. You have a neurotransmitter responsible for you seeking out movement, and now that's super high regulating on overdrive, right? So you're seeking out too much movement. So just because you're like, oh, I've only had it two months, that doesn't change the fact that your brain chemistry is messed up. And now you have to get your brain chemistry to normalize again. And the only way to do that is to go through recovery, right? To eat all the fear foods, to challenge yourself not to move your body, right? To work on what size your body looks like, right? Because we hallucinate fat stores on our body. And so these things that you have to do in recovery could possibly take way longer than two months. And you will probably go through extreme hunger and extreme hunger could likely last more than two months. So the amount of time that you feel like you are sick really has no bearing on the amount of time it takes to recover, the amount of extreme and mental hunger you might go through, and the fact whether you're sick or not, sick enough or not. Because whether you've had this decades like me or two months like you, we both have the same changes to our brain chemistry because of our eating disorder. So up here, we are no different. So why would I be more deserving of help than you if we have the same mixed up brain chemistry that needs to be renormalized again through opposite actions and eating our fear foods and eating those fats so that our brain chemistry can normalize our hormone that makes us seek fats out. So you are as worthy of care as I am or anyone else that has an eating disorder. Hi, it's your crummy mom. And I'm going through my clothes. I have so many work clothes. And honestly, I've come to the realization that I wear leggings and cardigans every day to work because you know what? That's how I feel comfortable. When I feel comfortable, I'm a more relaxed, happy human being at work. And I deal with uh, low kiddos, so I have to be relaxed and happy at work. Anyway, this human is on a meal plan. And they said, I don't know if I should just ditch my meal plan and go all in. So what's happening is they've been put on this meal plan. And this meal plan is starting to feel restrictive because their dietitian is giving them a certain amount of calories, right, for each meal, which is making them start to count calories. We've been there, right? I have been there. 
All right, well, so what I will say is, what I will say is, you're feeling like you can go all in. This is your choice. You can go all in because here's the thing. A meal plan is a minimum. A meal plan is the baseline. So all in is still going to satisfy your meal plan. If your dietitian is giving you caloric maximum maximums, run. Run the other way. You're not going to recover. So your meal plan absolutely is a minimum. So does all in fit with your meal plan? Yes. I need a new one of these. It's it's getting it's starting to pill or whatever that word is. I don't know what that word is. So yes, all in fits with your meal plan, right? Because if a meal plan is a minimum, you can eat your meal plan and still go all in. That said, I remember being in the same place you're in. My meal plan started feeling restrictive. I wanted to go out and eat Big Macs and ice cream and I just didn't feel comfortable. So I had to stop. I had to stop writing down what I was eating. I stopped because I didn't want, I was actually feeling shameful and not wanting my dietitian to see what I was eating. So it didn't go well for me. But that said, 100% go all in. Absolutely. You're committed. You think you can do it. What's the worst that happens from trying all in? It doesn't work. And you go back to your meal plan. What's the best case scenario? You recover quicker, right? So there, it's a win-win. There is no like, there is no bad side to that, right? So jump all in. Jump all in today. Maybe let your dietitian know. Give her an opportunity to watch you do that and watch you recover. Unless, of course, she's giving you caloric maximums and which you need to run the other way as fast as you can. So let me know how it goes, right? I'm super excited to see you go all in.